You know, I don't have like a a definite like date or anything like that. It's all on when the doctor's clear or the way my body feels in response to, you know, more loading, more work. Um, that's kind of like the gauge on when I'll be able to be out there safely. I'm always looking to learn, looking to try to insert myself in certain situations where uh, I can see where I can help uh, our team be better in certain situations. Uh, again, that's why I over communicate. That's why I'm uh, on the sidelines going up and down talking to Rondo consistently about uh, different scenario situations, talking to the coaches about uh, different scenarios and situations just to try to uh, stay engaged so that I don't get too far uh, out of what we're doing and where we're going. So when I am inserted and whenever I'm called on, I'm, I'm able to, uh, to be caught up to speed. Um, yeah, uh, like I said, we got a great group of guys. We got a good team. Um, you know, the show tonight, um, you know, late in the game, trying to miss cues, you know, defensively on our end. But, you know, for the most part, we did a, played a hell of a game um, with both ends of the ball. Uh, you know, and, you know, that sack game kind of lingered with us for a couple of days, um, you know, giving that game away. Um, but we do see him in a couple of days, uh, Tuesday, so um, we can get that payback. But um, like I said, last last game, you know, this is, you know, we have a team to you know, be able to run off several games in a row. Um, and we got to do it starting defensively, and um, I think we did a good <coughs> job defensively tonight. Um, kind of getting this this kick to start to our to our, um, our winning streak. I got one for both of you, uh, Anthony. You uh, were having success at the hoop tonight, and also away. And your jump shot um, hasn't been as reliable as it's been in the past this year. Uh, what was working for you with that balance between inside and outside? Um, shooting. I mean, just confidence. Uh, staying with it, um, long season, you know, uh, I'm going to continue to shoot the ball um, from three, whether it go in or not, you know, I think that opens up the floor for my, for my teammates, for Brian, Russ, Taylor to get downhill, um, and it opens it up for me you know, to get to the paint, you know, guys running out, closing out to the three, but I'm um, just trying to be effective at all three levels of the floor. Um, Man, it, it was going for me tonight. And LeBron, there was a play late in the fourth where you took some contact by the rim. I uh, want to know if you aggravated anything um, with the abdomen. No, I'm all right. I'll be ready to go on Tuesday. Um, just for the both of you, um, you know, that, that third quarter, quarter rally, you guys 16-0, and 0, the longest unanswered scoring run of the season. Um, what you kind of see is sort of the key to kind of unlocking that aspect of the team, especially in the transition game, and, and how do you see, you know, being able to string more of those runs together? I mean, it just starts on the defensive end. And uh, in the third quarter, we got defensive stops. We rebounded, and uh, we was able to get out in the transition. Uh, we shared the ball. We got the ball moving from side to side, and uh, we just played with great pace. You know, so those are pretty good ingredients to us uh, having a good third quarter and Coming to the night, we won five of our last eight third quarters, so they make it six out of nine. And hopefully, we want to continue that trend. LeBron, this is a, a team that's still trying to find their rhythm, continuity. You got a lot of guys moving in, and you still a couple of players you still haven't played with yet. As far as the, the challenge, I remember a couple of years ago you, you talked about, I can't remember what team, but you talked about how that was the biggest challenge, uh, if you remember whatever season that was. Where, where does this – what does this rank right now as far as the challenges and everything that's going into this season? I mean, it ranks right at, um, right at the top of any other challenge I've had in my career, which actually brings out the best of me, and I love that. You know, I love trying to, um, you know, figure out, you know, how we can be better, you know, get through the mud or get through adversity and, uh, you know, just make it sweeter at the, on the back end. So, you know, um, you know, I feel like, you know, we haven't even scratched the surface on what team we can be. And uh, we're going to continue to get better and better as we continue to learn each other more and more, continue to work into our system offensively and de defensively. You know, like I said, you know, um, you know, in preseason and training camp and everything, you know, we have nine, I believe, nine new guys 
uh, coming into a system they haven't been in. And, uh, you know, so that thing, that, it takes time. And, uh, you know, and obviously you hate losses. We, we don't want to lose. We get frustrated. We was, you know, you know, mad as heck the other night after that, you know, that sack loss. And, you know, we made it a point to uh, come in, you know, today, you know, very focused on the game plan, you know, and learning from the, our mistakes, and uh, we got better. So, you know, right there lets me know that we're a team that cares and we're a team that wants to continue to get better throughout, uh, throughout it all. Uh, starting with AD and then if LeBron wanted to weigh in, but uh, Frank had mentioned wanted to find some minutes for Austin or maybe even get some guards some extra minutes. So tonight just played the one big. Uh, how does that, if at all, impact you and LeBron defensively and how often you might be playing center? Is that something that we make a lot of or does it make a big difference for you? Um, when I'm at the five and LB's at the four, uh, you know, we can switch all, all over the floor. You know, all pick and rolls, pin downs, whatever. Uh, we just switch it. Um, when we have another big out there, <clears throat> we usually just do four or fives. Um, but it, it worked good for us tonight. I mean, DJ with his vertical spacing, um, rim protection. Um, you know, I think my role just changed a little bit if I'm at the four or I'm at the five. Um, I think my two threes came when DJ was at the five because um, I put on the perimeter and let him be down there. We don't want two bigs, you know, hogging the paint when, you know, these guys are attacking. Uh, and when I'm at the five, then that's usually, you know, me and DJ spot. And um, Melo is usually the other, other guy out there um, who's spacing the floor. So um, it, it, it all depends on, you know, what we're looking for. Um, I think both has helped us win games this year. Um, and, you know, it's up to coach you know, to decide what he wants to continue to go with. I mean, first of all, our condolences goes out to his family and friends. That's most important. Um, you know, may he rest in paradise. Uh, second of all, um, I think for a black community to see someone like that, for our younger generation and the kids that look up uh, to guys like all of us, um, to see a guy like Virgil break the barrier, to be able to go from where he started to being able to work for, you know, Louis Vuitton and, and Nike and all these unbelievable uh, companies, you know, as a black man, I mean, it just, it just does so much for our youth, you know, uh, two kids that grew up in the inner city and myself and AD, you know, you, you just don't you just don't know what it can do uh, to the younger generation, you know, and and obviously, you know, a lot of people look at us as inspiration, but we know the statistics on guys getting to the NBA is very low. Uh, but I think, you know, when you look at, you know, designers and, and musicians and, and artists and things of that nature, you know, or Virgil, his his his. Um, his impact on, um, you know, not only kids that's going on right now, but just our generation, my generation, 80s generation, and so on and so on. Uh, just big time impact. And, um, you know, what, what he brought to the table, his flair, his style, his swag, um, you see on the feet of, uh, of a lot of people, you know, and, uh, and, and on the bodies of a lot of people, on the, on the heads of a lot of people, you know, wearing hats and clothing and socks and shoes and things of that nature. So, you know, a guy like that's legacy will live on. So I'm just proud to be a part of that legacy. No, yeah, for sure. And to piggyback on that, you know, just being from Chicago, um, you know, how much he's done for his city, um, how much we've, you know, when All-Star Chicago, me and him did a thing together as well. Um, but like Brian said, just touching so many lives, especially the black community of, you know, his art, you know, it's probably one of the first times we've seen something like that that, the black community just gravitated to so quickly. Not just the black community, everyone. You know, everyone gravitated to. I mean, he's, you know, a phenomenal talent in what he did um, and what he's done with with his art and to do it throughout the world with his with his clothing and, um, you know, like Bronson, you see it, you see it on everybody. You know, I wore a whole Louis Vuitton collection to, today. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like it's just, um, you know, he just brought so much, you know, positivity to the world, man. It just sucks, you know. And to think about it, like same thing with Chadwick Bosman, like, you know, these guys able to, you know, it was so low key, and um, you know, I didn't really know about it, um, but you can see it in his appearance, you know, the change. But you know, to be able to, you know, go through, you know, what he was going through and still try to work and put out, you know, work for the community, man. It's,